Have you ever noticed that organizing your digital space can often feel like trying to calm a storm with just an umbrella? In fact, once you learn to organize your digital space, it can change your life forever. It's like finding a master key that opens every door in a big building. I've spent the last 10 years perfecting a system to organize my digital space and have created a guide that works for everyone. So today I'm going to show you what this system is, the tricks you need to follow and the individual steps you need to take to finally organize your digital life. So let me show you the system that I have developed that has already helped hundreds of people that have used my guide to date. Even more so, millions of people have found my organizational content here on my channel useful so far. But first, I need to show you why this system is so powerful, why you need it and why other organizational hacks might have failed you in the past, leaving you with even more digital clutter. So when was the last time you struggled to find an old email or document in the chaos of your digital space? If you're like me, it probably wasn't that long ago. Organizing your digital life is about more than just decluttering. It's about creating a system that optimizes everything from your inbox to your cloud storage. When my digital space is a mess, I lose track of important tasks and quickly feel overwhelmed. Early in my career, I missed deadlines and opportunities simply because I wasn't organized. Stress followed and so did failed attempts to quick fix hacks, like bulk deleting emails or using vague folder names. These hacks are like rearranging a messy desk without actually solving the problem. I now see my digital space like a garden. It needs regular tending and smart organization. Quick fixes are like trimming weeds without pulling them out. They'll just come back worse. But with a solid system, you'll experience the benefits, less stress, more focus and a digital environment that works for you. A tidy digital space isn't just nice to have. It's essential in today's fast paced world. By setting up a system now, you're not just getting organized, you're transforming how you interact with the digital world, making it a tool for productivity and peace. So let me share with you my system to get your digital life in order. First, it's all about laying a proper foundation and organizing your files, folders and documents. Then it's about managing what comes in, your emails and meetings, and notes and other information. And finally, it's about maintaining a solid routine to make sure your digital life stays in order and you have minimal effort to sustainably manage all your tasks, priorities and assets. So first of all, let's start with organizing your files, folders and documents in the right way. Now you might wonder what the right way is. Maybe you even think that there is no system or technique required to get your digital life in order. But let me tell you that it is. Organizing your digital files isn't just about sorting them into random folders. It's about creating a system that adapts to your work and evolves with your needs. This process involves a clear understanding of your current digital chaos and a strategic approach to streamline it. So before you can even start to file and organize, you should start by decluttering. I usually begin with purging unnecessary files. That means clearing out duplicates, outdated documents and anything that no longer serves a purpose. This not only frees up space, but also reduces the complexity of the next steps. Then you can choose a filing structure. It's essential to select a filing system that reflects how you think and work whether it's a simple alphabetical system, a structured priority list or a more flexible unstructured approach, the key is to find a structure that you can maintain easily. For example, a sorted alphabetical hierarchy is intuitive due to its alphabetical order and limited subfolders, making it easy to maintain and navigate. By the way, if you don't know which filing structure is best for you, I recommend checking out The Digital Architect, a comprehensive guide I've personally written packing all my knowledge and experience into your ultimate toolkit for digital efficiency. This isn't about just organizing files, it's a complete overhaul of how you manage your digital life. 
From streamlined file management to best practices for handling your emails, calendar and your notes, this guide provides actionable tips that can transform your approach to digital organization. So if digital clutter has been holding you back, this guide is your solution. Dive into the digital architect and start reclaiming your time, energy and headspace today. Click the link in the description below to learn more and boost your productivity. Once you have settled on your target filing structure, you can set up your folders, implementing a hierarchy that limits folder depth to prevent overcomplication. Three levels of folders from general to specific usually suffice. This setup helps you locate files quickly and manage them efficiently. Now, when sorting your files and documents into their target folders, take care of naming conventions. Consistency in file names helps in retrieving documents quickly. Use clear, descriptive names that include important dates or keywords. This practice not only aids in quick identification, but also in searches and archiving. In addition, always keep your file names short and simple. Not only because it's easier to locate them, but also because some operating systems, such as Windows, have a path limit that does not allow you to create too lengthy file names. Now, once everything is set up and you eventually have a proper filing system, you want to take care of it like you would be looking after your nicely planted and blooming garden. So it's all about regular maintenance. Schedule regular reviews of your digital files to reorganize and archive old data. This habit prevents the buildup of unnecessary digital clutter and keeps your system efficient. This whole process might take a while, especially when you are doing it manually. So maybe you want to try out digital tools, such as Everything, that helps you search and find files with ease. To close the first step of the entire organizational process, you should consider two things. There's no one-size-fits-all solution in digital organization. So what works for you might not work for someone else. That's why you should adapt the principles to fit your specific needs and habits. In addition, make sure to backup and secure your files. Always keep a reliable backup system to protect your data from loss or corruption. Whether you use cloud software or physical storage does not matter. What matters is that you keep a copy of your data at a secure place. The second area you should take care of when organizing your digital life is your emails and calendar. Because if you're anything like me, an overflowing inbox and a chaotic calendar can really throw off your day. So let's tackle how to manage your inbox and meetings in a way that actually makes sense and works for you in the long term. I always begin by clearing out the clutter. Very similar to your files and folders, but with your inbox. This means unsubscribing from newsletters you never read deleting old promotions and archiving important emails you might need later. Again, think of it as weeding your garden so the plants you care about can really thrive. Just like with physical files, emails need a good home. That's why you should set up a filing system for emails. I use folders for different topics like HR, IT, company news or projects where all respective emails are filed. If you don't like this approach, you might want to try out folders like Action Needed, Waiting for Response and Reference. Using such simple folders is a game changer, making it super easy to find what I need when I need it without any fuss. In an ideal world, you should now file each and every email in its respective folder. However, that might take a while and become quite tedious depending on how many emails you get per day. That's why you should automate your inbox with filters and rules. I set up automatic filters to manage my inbox. Newsletters go straight into their respective folders, emails from key contacts get highlighted, or for some routine tasks, I've even set up some standard responses that I create with just a click. Having some good rules in place is like having a personal assistant who organizes your mail before you even see it. Now, once you have cleared your inbox, let's look at and optimize your calendar. I use my calendar not just for appointments, but also to block out time for my projects. Color coding helps a lot here. To say the least, I love color coding my calendar, but also my emails. Blue for internal meetings, red for external meetings, yellow for personal appointments, or green for learning and development. This visual strategy helps me quickly scan and see what kind of a day or week I have ahead. 
If you want to know more such practical tips and tricks to streamline your workflow and amplify your results, make sure to subscribe to my newsletter and grab a free copy of the Essential Guide to 3x Productivity. Let's be honest. Are you tired of feeling buried by your to-do list, constantly running out of time and never making real progress? If you're exhausted by the daily grind, wasting time and stressing out without seeing the expected results, then you need this guide. It's packed with proven strategies that actually work to triple your productivity by mastering three key areas. Building solid structures that keep your day organized and focused creating simple systems that make managing your time, tasks and priorities effortless, and supercharging your workflow with Microsoft 365 tips that save you hours. So if you're ready to reclaim your time, reduce your mental load and get more done every day, don't wait. Sign up for my newsletter via the link in the description, grab the free guide and start making real lasting progress today. In addition to color coding, I use consistent naming for easy search. Yes, you can also search your calendar. I use Outlook and searching my calendar helps me, for example, to recall past meetings. I keep my event titles clear and uniform, so I always know what each appointment is about without needing to open it. For example, instead of just meeting, you might want to write project name, project to fix and parties involved. It saves time and keeps me prepared. Another tip I can only recommend is implementing a routine maintenance. At the end of every day, I take five minutes to review my inbox and calendar for the next day and clean out my inbox and plan the next day. On Fridays, I take a few more extra minutes and do the same thing for the entire next week. This little habit keeps me from drowning in digital clutter and makes Mondays so much less daunting. Now, when it comes to capturing and organizing notes, I found that having a method that adapts to both the predictable and the unpredictable parts of my life is crucial. Let's dive into how I manage to keep my notes both flexible and structured. The first step in effective note management is understanding what makes notes so key. They are not just random scribbles, but important parts of your digital ecosystem and everyday life. Imagine a day at work without the ability to capture or recall your notes from meetings, presentations, pitches, and so on. Notes can capture fleeting ideas, detailed project plans, or even spontaneous moments of inspiration. This is why capturing every detail correctly and in a format that resonates with your thinking style is essential. At the very beginning, you should select the right tool to capture and organize your notes. Over the years, I've experimented with various tools, such as Obsidian, Notion, Evernote, Microsoft OneNote, and more. But the key has always been to choose one that integrates seamlessly with my other systems. That's why I currently use Microsoft OneNote most of the times and some other tools like Notion for individual use cases. In any case, you should choose a tool that makes the entry and retrieval of information effortless. Now, when it comes to organizing notes, I align my note organization with my overall filing system. This coherence ensures I don't lose track of my thoughts and can easily shift information from notes to more permanent files. For instance, if my files are categorized by project, not only do my email folders, but also my notes mirror those folders and I have the exact same structure. This makes everything from retrieval to review simpler and faster. If you follow my principle of mirroring everything from your folder structure, you're quite quick to set up your notebook and are ready to capture information. As you might know, there are countless capturing techniques that all promise to help you capture information with ease. But not every note-taking technique suits everyone. So you should try out different techniques and settle on the one that suits you and your projects or note-taking style best. I prefer and recommend to capture just the essence of information rather than every word. Using techniques like the Cornell method or mind mapping helps me focus on the key points and makes the review process much more straightforward. This approach saves time and keeps my notes relevant. One of the best strategies I've adopted and perfected is using templates for repetitive types of notes. 
Whether it's meeting minutes, project briefs or steering committees, templates offer a consistent structure that speeds up the note-taking process and reduces the cognitive load. I believe every note-taking tool nowadays offers the opportunity to create custom templates for your notes. But if you don't want to create your own templates, feel free to check out the Digital Architect via the link in the description below. It's my guide to digital organization that also includes some standard note-taking templates for Microsoft OneNote. Finally, you should integrate your notes with other tools. I ensure that my notes are integrated with tools like calendars and task managers. This can easily be done because I'm using all Microsoft 365 applications like Outlook or Outlook Calendar, but I'm sure that's also possible with other tools and ecosystems like Google. So using Microsoft, this integration turns notes into actions and keeps everything from ideas to implementation aligned. Having completed all those steps, from pruning the overgrowth in your garden, deleting all redundant and old files and planting new trees, so setting up your folder, email and note structure, it's time to make sure your garden thrives over time. That means keeping your digital organization system in peak condition after its initial setup. And that's an ongoing process, even though it's not much effort. I recommend not letting this slip through. So let's talk about how I ensure that everything stays as efficient and manageable as the day I set it up. And that's really just three things to consider. Number one, start with regular cleanups. Just like you might tidy up your home every week, I make it a point to clean up my digital space regularly. This involves deleting outdated files, archiving completed projects and reviewing my folders and notes to remove anything that no longer serves a purpose. This not only keeps my digital landscape manageable, but also ensures that I'm not overwhelmed by digital clutter. Number two is to adapt and update. Life changes and so does the way we work. That's why I review my organizational structures from time to time to make sure they still fit my current needs. Sometimes a project becomes more complex or a new type of document starts to pile up, which requires some changes in my system. By staying flexible and ready to adapt my folders, tags and notes, I keep everything streamlined and functional. And number three, maintain consistency. One of the secrets to maintain a smooth system is consistency. And I strongly believe that's not only the case with digital organization, but also with so many other things in life, but that's a different story. So whether it's how I label my new files or the structure of my emails, keeping things consistent saves time and mental energy. It also prevents errors and confusion, especially when I'm searching for information under a deadline. Now that you know the basics to organizing your digital life, there is more to discover and you might want to know some advanced tips and tricks. They range from further automation and connecting different apps, understanding and using metadata, mastering keyboard shortcuts or leveraging AI tools. Part of it is covered in my comprehensive guide to mastering digital organization, the digital architect, which you can check out by the link in the description below. Other parts are covered in my newsletter or in past and future videos, such as this one, that you should watch now, where I share best practices when it comes to note-taking in today's professional or educational world.